Hey there, how's it going? I grew up with the original NES and the SNES. I did have a Nintendo 64 for a brief while, and I did have a PlayStation. But I kind of fell out of gaming in the 3D era. Not really because I didn't like it, I just did other things at that time. And I didn't really get back into video gaming until almost a decade later when I started playing games on my PC. So when I actually started to make games, I wanted to create experiences like I remembered from being a kid, 2D and pixel art. But now that I know a bit more, I've been curious about what it's like to work on a 3D game. To be honest, I've been pretty intimidated by 3D engines. Early on in my learning to make games, we're talking like a couple months in, I tried 3D once by following one Unity tutorial. I made a sphere roll around and collect spinning cubes. And to be honest, I just really didn't enjoy working in Visual Studio. For me, staring at a wall of code just isn't enjoyable. It's it's just not something I like. If you enjoy it, more power to you. From my understanding, it will give you way more control. I always advocate to use the workflow that's right for you and your project. Hence why I stick with Construct. So far, it's been able to do what I've wanted, and I've enjoyed it. But I've been wanting to try out and play with 3D lately, and that just isn't something Construct does. Everyone kept telling me about the Blueprint system in Unreal and how it's similar to the event-based system that I'm used to. So curiosity finally got the best of me, and I downloaded Unreal Engine 4 and set out to learn. It didn't start out too well. I tried following the in-engine tutorial tips, but I was a bit overwhelmed by the sheer number of things here. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm just not the best at staying focused on written instructions. I watched a few tutorials that I later found out was stuff that I didn't really need to know yet, and just felt completely and thoroughly overwhelmed. But I tried to keep that from discouraging me. It was late at the time, so I figured I'll start again fresh the next day, and we'll see how it goes. For a few weeks prior, I had been talking about wanting to learn Unreal on my Twitch streams, and everyone wanted to see the learning process that I go through. You, watching this video, will be saved the endless time I spent trying to figure out what menus, tabs, dropdowns, and other things I needed. <laughs> Open full blueprint. Okay, so I didn't open the full blueprint. How do I... Let's see. Create child... No. How do I open a blueprint reference? Poor Twitch chat had to watch me fumble around for ages. For me, this is common when I'm learning any new software. My usual approach is to find a simple thing that I want to do, and then find out how to do that. Then, over a little while of learning one new thing at a time, you start to see the similarities in how everything works together and how the workflow goes. Now right up front, I should mention that I started with the default third-person template. So what you're seeing here is what came out of the box from Unreal. I figured starting from scratch would be a horrible idea, considering I knew nothing of what I was doing. I quickly became obsessed with the floaty jump though. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine. And trying to figure out how to turn the gravity up or something like that. After fumbling through menus and blueprints and all over the place, I eventually found a setting that did mostly what I wanted. Then, it took me a good while to figure out how to actually set it properly. My whole reason for getting into Unreal is I really wanted to make a 3D platformer. It's something I've always wanted to try and never been able to do. So, now I have a player that can jump, and I found a menu that lets me drag cubes with collision into the scene. Those are the building blocks of a platformer, so yes. I just start putting a quick little jumping level together. This began my still standing battle with the object known as the camera. I don't know what it is, but I struggle with maneuvering in a 3D environment so much. If you see any clips of me doing things at a really weird camera angle in this video, just know I was doing my best and that was where I landed. I placed shapes and a platform that I could now jump to, and only thanks to a couple of very knowledgeable and patient chat members, I was able to make a message appear when you made it to the top. And through even more chat member patience, I was also able to make a platform that when you jump on it, moves up like an elevator. I also got bored a few times and may have started a fire or two, or made a bunch of clutter. Yeah. And that's what I got for that day. The next time I streamed Unreal, I wanted to see if I could recreate the process of what I had learned the last time. Last time I learned how to make a trigger when you landed on the platform, the platform would move. This time I wanted to do something that I thought would be a little simpler, which is just have the platforms moving back and forth in a continuous loop. I learned about promoting variables, which was really handy once I found out how to do that. And I was starting to get a somewhat basic idea of how blueprints work. And fortunately for me, it does work very similar to Construct, but I still ran into issues because the names of things are different. For example, in Construct, if I want something to happen as soon as we start the layout, I just have to call on start of layout. In Unreal, to do the same thing on the start, you have to use begin play. Learning the new terminology is not terrible, it can just trip you up every now and then when you're trying to do things that you think you know how to do. With the moving platforms now moving, I tried to make the disappearing reappearing blocks from Mega Man, but I had no clue how to do any kind of signaling on them, 
So it was kind of impossible to be able to use them because you just never knew when they were going to disappear or reappear. So they were ignored and I added the moving platforms to the level. I also discovered that when a player jumped from a moving platform, they gained a momentum boost, which I thought was pretty cool and I incorporated it into a couple of jumps later on. I ended the stream feeling like I knew a bit more and I was having a blast just playing in 3D. It really is a whole new world. That third axis adds so much. Before the next stream, I watched some more tutorials. This time, I watched the Blueprint Overview by Epic, and they were great. I was kicking myself for not finding them before. I had started with the third-person tutorials, thinking that that's where I needed to start, and I didn't realize that I should have watched the Blueprint ones first. Whoops. It's all good, and mostly my fault because I didn't do proper research. This tutorial taught me how to make Blueprint classes that can be reused. I made these wall lights, and even figured out how to make the player run faster by holding Shift. In my last Learning Unreal stream for the time being, I wanted to put something together that my Twitch chat could play. I failed pretty hard at making a structure into a class, and I lost my level a few times. Oh, Skystreet Blueprint. There it is. Sweet. Okay, uh, I'm supposed to refresh it? Uh, I don't know what I just did. I double-clicked this, thinking it would open the blueprint, but it did a few times. Turns out I thought I knew more than I actually did. I decided to make a vertical jumping level, kind of in the vein of getting over it, where if you fell, you fell all the way back down to the bottom. The player would have to climb their way up out of a dark hole to win. Kind of like in Batman, but also because I didn't know what I was doing yet with 3D level design. And I figured I could actually make that work. So I put a bunch of stuff together that's way too hard, and when you fall, you basically land at the bottom. I added textures, although I admit I still have absolutely no idea what I'm doing when it comes to texturing. I didn't know how to change scale or anything, so I put things on, and if it didn't look good, I just put another thing on. But now I have a problem. The level is really dark. I added a bunch of lights, and it turns out that tanks your frame rate. So I removed all the lights and spent a while figuring out how to get the sun at high noon, so it's at least pointing directly down into the level. I added a light source to the player similar to Dark Souls and called it good. I made sure it was beatable, but it's really hard. I kind of had a bit of an evil moment where I was enjoying making this hard way too much. Falling right there after all of that? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna hate me. <laughs> and the joy I get out of that is not right. It's pretty tough. Is this game good? Oh no, of course not. It's probably a very loose definition of what you would call a game. I didn't know how to do menus, so the game just starts on the player in the level. I also didn't know how to make a close button, so you have to Alt F4 to get out, or you're stuck. There are jumps that are extremely difficult and kind of inconsistent, especially since I use the momentum gain trick as a mechanic which I don't fully have control over, or understand how it works. So this is the game I made. Again, if you can really call it a game, it's more a playable scribble. This was me getting a new tool and doodling around to see what it does. In total, this was made in less than 20 hours of in-engine time. And I actually have to say, I'm super impressed. I'm nowhere near at any kind of place where I could do anything substantial. But it's a great start and I've been having an absolute blast playing with it. I'm not planning to switch to Unreal as my main engine or anything, but it's been really fun to play with and great to know I can do more in 3D in the future if I want. My next adventure is to start learning how to create some 3D art, be it voxels or Blender, and then to revisit Unreal to learn how to make those things come to life. But that's a project and a video for another day. My final thought on the whole experience is that I really enjoyed the whole thing. The built-in starter projects for Unreal are pretty amazing and they're great to learn from. And they allow a complete noob like me to be able to get up and running and create something that actually looks somewhat decent. I know that if I had to start from nothing and build up a project without being able to utilize this, I would have fallen off pretty early and wouldn't have had the energy to continue learning. I know I didn't scratch even the slightest bit of the surface of what Unreal can actually do, and we'll have to see what the future holds in terms of what else I'm going to do there. If you've been considering trying something you've said was too hard, give it a try. You might have a great time, you never know. If you want to try this thing I've made, I will leave a link in the description with the password. It's just a really hard level and nothing else, so I'm warning you now. Don't, don't complain. <laughs> But if you are crazy enough to try it and you make it to the top, send me a screenshot. I'd absolutely love to see it. Thank you all very much for watching. I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my patrons, especially Abishan, Adam Edwards, David Scott, MLK, Ragnarbro, Scott Hansen, and Sopinum. You are all awesome people, and I truly appreciate the support. If you'd like to play my other non-3D games, you can visit vimlark.itch.io. To get in contact with me, you can stop by my Twitch streams, where I'm always doing something related to game development or pixel art, message me on Twitter, or join the Discord with lots of other really cool people. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.